Welcome to Serving Locally with me, your host, Michelle Dinas, the podcast where we spotlight service in the Longmont and surrounding communities. All right, let's connect. Welcome to this week's episode of Serving Locally. Um, I am here with Alicia Burns from the Twin Peaks Classical Academy, and um, I just want to say thank you for coming, uh, making making time, and coming out and sharing with us what um, about your guys' academy. And um, so we'll just start off with who are you and what is the Twin Peaks Classical Academy, and just a quick little overview. Sure. Well, I really like the school, so if I go way too long, you'll have to stop me. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> um, so Twin Peaks Classical Academy is a tuition-free charter school here in Longmont. We're just down off of Sunset Street, so not far from where we are now. Um, We are pre-K through 12, so we have three-year-olds through 19-year-olds in the building, Um, and we do things a little bit differently than the school district, and so it's it's fun to get out here and get the chance to to share what we do. Um, We think everybody deserves to know their choices for for educating their children, and part of that is making sure they know what the choices are. That's good to know because I know public school, and I know really expensive private school, and that's why we homeschool. So (laughs) um, I education is key to the future of our kids and just in general. So education to us is a huge part. That's why my husband works really hard so I can stay home and try to give our kids the best education that they can get that, that, that we think, but um, that's not for everyone. I totally understand that. And yeah, so having options is wonderful. So um, can you give us a little bit of a background about, um, it's not really an organization, no. Yeah, we're a school. Yeah. Um, so, so, so give us a little bit of uh, background about your school. Sure. So we started in 1997. We're the oldest running charter school in St. Brain Valley. Um, we used to be in the building on Main Street off of, what is it, Main and 8th-ish? The, um, the old school building. My, my husband calls it Hogwarts. Yes, it does look a little <laughs> bit like Hogwarts. Yes, yes that's true. Yeah, uh, But we moved into our new facility in 2010 um, and have since expanded to open a high school and have really grown. Uh, it's been fun to watch that. It's been fun to watch our development over the last few years. Um, I've been at Twin Peaks for 14 years. Wow. Um, started as an English teacher, seventh grade, seventh grade English. Um, and we have really grown into to being, I think, what this community has asked us to be. Um, we started as a charter school, obviously, but in the last um, five to seven years, since our executive director, Joe Messling, joined us, uh, have really honed our vision on being classical uh, and differenti- differentiating ourselves from what the rest of the district is doing. Not because what they're doing is bad, uh, but because, as you mentioned, it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so charter schools exist to provide a different choice and a different option for families. Um, so we wanted to be something different. We wanted to be something stand outish in the community. Awesome. Um, can you just tell me as somebody that is wondering, what does classical mean? Yeah, that's a great question. Classical education is interesting in that the more you learn about it, the more questions you have. Mm. So it's it's not a, an easily definable answer. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> so see, I could talk for hours about <laughs> classical education. I think the, the biggest part that people coming in with, with very little knowledge about classical education, the, the biggest things that... Um, are impactful to those families are, one, we believe our most important job is raising and helping to raise um, great humans. Mm -hmm. So we do that through our content and through our our focus on literacy and numeracy. However, our our main goal is to, to create better humans. We talk a lot about virtue, and we Mm. talk a lot about character, and we talk a lot about morality and and being human and what connects us to humans from back when when we were reading the classics. And why we still read the classics is that that shared humanity we have with every generation. Um, One of my favorite parts is we teach a classical curriculum. Um, So my, my daughters are in first and third grade, and I always like this example of my third grader was in second grade last year and she was learning about Paul Bunyan Mm. and she was fascinated with Paul Bunyan and the blue ox and and the whole storyline so she called my dad or grandpa and 
was telling him what she had learned about Paul Bunyan. And my dad goes, oh, and Babe the Blue Ox. And her eyes were like, whoa. We can talk about this. We can talk about this. You know? That's great. And what she is learning is what I learned, and Mm -hmm. it's what her grandparents learned. Um, And we have that commonality and that common language uh, to to mingle the generations. And and what a cool opportunity that I think a lot of kids are missing these days. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Just to to be able to talk to anybody. Yes. It's a huge thing. Um, So what is your focus at Twin Peaks Classical Academy? Um, so as I mentioned, the classical education, um, a big, another big part of classical education is we believe that we are a tool for parents in educating their child. Mm, so I like that we're, a lot. <laughs> yeah. So we're not there to replace parents. Uh, we're not there to, to step on your toes and teach kids things that you don't want them to know. Um, we're very careful. We're very transparent with our curriculum and, and what we read and, and what we're teaching. And that's with the intention of, of we believe our role is to assist in educating your child, not to replace you. Mm. Um, so we are, are very intentional with that. Um, you can access all our curriculum online and, and ask questions. And um, so parents so I are think, very involved. Yes, then. you know, some not even as involved in helping in the school. Mm-hmm. As kids get older, you know, there's very few parents that can come and teach calculus. Um, but involvement means different things to different families. Yes. So being able to see what every teacher's agenda was for the day, what they taught, what the homework was, what the objective was, that's a, a role and an involvement that a lot of parents don't have the chance to have. Mm-hmm. Even if they're just too busy to yeah. come into the school, they can still be very involved in their child's education. Um, and that's our goal with our level of transparency with parents. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. So who are you trying to reach with your guys' school? Anybody. <laughs> um, again, we're pre-K through 12. So we, we really, I think in the last couple of years, especially the last year, had this kind of realization that people don't always know about us. Mm-hmm. And people go, we, I, I didn't even know you were over here. And we thought, well, what a shame. You know, a, a classical education isn't for everybody. Charter schools aren't for everybody. And that's okay. But everybody deserves to know that we're there. Mm -hmm. And everybody deserves to know that there's a different choice, um, that there's different options for families. Um, Tuition free. We're free, just like any other public school. Um, But we offer something very different. And so I think our our biggest focus is is making sure the community. um, And we have families that come from all over. We have families from Berthoud and and Mead and um, Weld County and and Boulder County. So we have families from everywhere. Um, but just making sure that people know we're here and, and we're a great option uh, and we'd, we'd love for everyone to come check us out. That's fantastic. Um, what makes the work of Twin Peaks Classical Academy different than other similar schools? Yeah. Uh, well, one thing I haven't talked a lot about yet is uh, St. Vrain has been really intentional with um, putting technology in kids' hands. Mm-hmm. Um, a classical education I, does not. And, and we are we are pretty low tech, not that we don't have technology and not that we don't teach kids how to use it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but our, our philosophy is that it is not and should not ever be a replacement for a great teacher teaching great content to kids. Mm. So we, we do have technology. We probably have enough devices to be one-to-one. But philosophically, we'd rather our kids be reading real books yeah. and be writing with yeah. paper and pencil. You can't see off screen, but my, my son's nodding his yep. head. <laughs> yeah. He likes the real books. Yeah. There is something. It was funny. Um, I was talking to my, one of my friends, um, and she was saying, because she homeschools too, and she's like, you know, we have the Kindles and stuff. She's like, but there's something about flipping the page and feeling the weight shift from not knowing on this side to knowing on this side. I like that. That every page you feel the weight of you knowing something more. And I just, I loved that. Yeah. Oh man, that's great. Yeah. So we, we talk a lot about human interaction too. Mm -hmm. And through COVID and just crazy screen time that kids have Mm -hmm. these days, a lot of that is going away. Yeah. Kids have lost the ability to make eye contact and shake hands and and greet people. And to talk. And to talk. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. So we, we talk a lot. I would say our, most of our classrooms are, are conversation driven. So we, we learn through 
talking. We learn through interacting with other Actual humans. words, not just shorthand. Yeah. Yeah. How to, how so to we, actually use vocabulary. We teach kids to <laughs> annotate. So they That's write great. in their books, the books we give them. So they own that book. That's great. And they write and they underline and they ask questions. So while they're feeling the weight of that knowledge, they're also writing and interacting with that book. And they can look back and see. Yep. Oh, yeah. I like that a lot. We recently had one of my students, she's in eighth grade this year, and um, she had her backpack was in the back seat with her water bottle, and her water bottle leaked onto her novel, her Romeo and Juliet, and mm. she lost all her annotations. <sighs> And she was crushed that oh. all those annotations, she'd worked so hard and all the notes and no, thoughts. I feel that. And, I, yeah. was in, I was in IB in, in high school and yes. we had to annotate our books yeah. because we had to. Like, yeah. it was so funny up until, up until that program, do not write in the books. <laughs> yeah, all. they it don't belong to not, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's just not okay. Yeah. And so I can feel that to, to, to lose that. Oh, man, oh, man. she <laughs> was devastated. I, I don't, she, she's going to hear this and she's going to be like, I'm still not over it. She was very crushed. <laughs> It'll be okay, I yeah. promise. <laughs> you can do it again. Yes, oh. yes. You oh. can do it again and better because you'll, <laughs> you'll be thinking you about it, it again. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, so I think that's one of the biggest things parents come to us to is uh, St. Vrain has made the decision to give an iPad to every student. Um, so students come in in kindergarten and are given an iPad that I think is, uh, we'll see what all that screen time is doing to kids. Right. But the iPad was intended, it was made, it was created to it's be a, a distraction yeah. device, right? Yeah. It's a game. Mm -hmm. So then expecting kids to learn how to read and write uh, and become better humans mm. on an iPad. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that I, I don't know that I buy that. That's why we're classical. Yep. <laughs> I like it. Um, so I think of what, what you're saying is your greatest need is just exposure. Yeah. What other needs do you guys have? Yeah. Uh, well, we're a public school, so I, you know, anything is always helpful. Um, I think knowing that we're an option, Mm -hmm. um, and exposure and letting Longmont know that, that we're a choice uh, is probably our greatest need. Um, we, we do supply all of our, our school supplies to students as well as part of their um, enrollment process and oh, things wow. like that. So we, we do always welcome donations and anything like that. Um, we do have a gala planned here in Longmont on March 9th. Uh, so our website will will start be ticket sales hopefully on Friday maybe next week, um, but our gala will be at the Dickens this year. So we're pretty excited oh, cool. at the, uh, about that. So that would be something I think the community, whether you have kids or not, that might be a fun evening to come join us and um, learn about us and support the work we're doing with kids. That's fantastic. So I was. Did you have any events coming up? Obviously, yeah. in March 9th, um, yeah. or volunteer opportunities that if anybody feels like this is something they like to do. Yeah, give me a call if you <laughs> if you have any uh, special talents or anything that you feel like would be would be great to share with kids. Let us know. We have uh, career days for our high school are, are coming up, and they're kind of throughout the year. So we bring in people from the community. We bring in um, all sorts of different. A lot of them are parents, uh, but not all of them. So coming to share about different career opportunities. Um, we have a bunch of high schoolers that are very talented individuals in lots of different areas, uh, and they're also great kids. Mm -hmm. They're they're fun to be around. Uh, so anybody maybe that has internships or, or anything like that, maybe opportunities for our high school kids, um, would also be welcome. That's not, that's great. And when does when do you guys hold that? Um, the gala or the the career day? Uh, well, they're kind of throughout the year, so oh, okay. we do several of them. Okay, yep. cool. So yeah, just just keep an eye out. Yep, keep All an right. eye out, <laughs> or or contact us. Give yeah. us a call, and and we can always add more to. That's, that's the next question. How <laughs> yeah. can people contact yeah. and find out more about Twin Peaks? <laughs> um, so our go to our website, mm -hmm. uh, TwinPeaksClassical.org. Um, we have all sorts of different information on there. There's several videos um, about what we do and, and how we're different. Uh, so learning a little bit more about that. Um, also, all of our social medias are, are great ways to, to see what's happening at the school. Um, Facebook and Instagram and, and checking us out and seeing all the great things our kids do. Yeah, and they'll be under my QR code, so you can find it there also. Great. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, this sounds really good. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add that maybe we've missed or you just feel passionate about talking about for a minute? Because we... 
We got some time. We got some time, yeah. <laughs> we were really fast. You know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love this prepared. place. I'll talk about <laughs> Twin Peaks all day. Yeah. Um, I, I just think we're we're very unique. You know, my, my girls have been there. My girls are, in again, first and third grade. Uh, they've been there since preschool. And, and watching them grow and develop in and, and the elementary school has been uh, amazing. Um, the phonics-based reading uh, and algorithmic math that I can help them with and, mm-hmm. and things like that have been really um, fascinating to see on the elementary side as well. So classical, I think, kind of has the reputation maybe of being for older kids or, or we talk a lot about books and we talk a lot about Moby Dick, and but also for our little ones learning to read and annotate and hold real books, um, it's hugely impactful for, for those developing brains too as they're little. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else. Lots of things. I always tell my kids, I'm like, I just want you to have a good foundation. Yeah. As long as you can read, write well, and do your basic math, yep. you can learn and teach yourself anything. Yeah. I mean, especially with YouTube out there, you can you can watch any video and learn <laughs> yeah. how to do anything. Yeah. But seriously, like you, if you can if you if you can learn how to just what's it could what's be um the words are escaping my head. When you read something and you can comprehend. Yeah. And you can problem solve and you can remember and you can yeah. summarize and you can write about it. Like that's uh, invaluable tools. Yeah. So I, I kind of didn't even get to that part. We talk, I talk so fast. I get excited. <laughs> you do. Yeah. <laughs> Good time. <laughs> I get excited. Um, so a, a classical education is based on the trivium. So this the, the concept that there is a, a path to learning any new material. Mm-hmm. So so through that path, uh, the initial stage is the grammar stage, and that's a heavy in elementary of learning basic facts and skills and dates and times and all of the things that you need mm-hmm. in order to learn anything later yes. in life. So like you were saying, a strong foundation. So then the next stage, which is heavy in middle school, is Mm -hmm. that logic stage Mm -hmm. where kids start to connect the things they've learned. And now that I know A and now that I know B, what can I gather about C? Um, And putting that information together um, is the the logic stage where developmentally these kids, um, you probably know this with your middle schooler (laughs) over here, they are developmentally, it is their time to challenge Oh yeah, and to ask questions and to argue Mm -hmm. and to say, but why? Oh, why? Wait, yeah. let's logic this out. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. So that is very developmentally appropriate, and we really lean hard into that in middle school. Of, yeah. We want you to ask questions. Let's think of good questions. Let's think of, well, now that you have an idea, how do you defend it? Right? What is your evidence for your opinion? It's not whether you like Moby Dick or not. Right? Your opinion about whether you like Moby Dick or not does not change that it's a classic. Right. It doesn't change the worth of the book. So how do you um, provide evidence to defend your claims? So we really lean hard into that in middle school. Awesome. The, the third stage is the rhetoric stage. So as kids get a little bit older, now how do you articulate new ideas? And how do you have those conversations with people and, and create new things and articulate it in writing and, and orally so that people understand you? Mm-hmm. You know, there's this big focus on STEM and science, technology, engineering, and math, which is great, mm-hmm. but people who make it far in those fields also have a strong foundation in how to read and communicate mm-hmm. and write very well. Yes. Um, so that's that's our philosophy is, right. is teaching those kids those and skills. And it's important. It's true. It's very important. So no, that's great. Yeah. So you guys do STEM program then? Uh, we don't have a STEM program. Oh, okay. Nope. We uh, so we're more of a, a classical education is it leans heavier towards liberal arts. Um, so the humanities and, and discussions and, and things of that sort. Um, however, we're continuing to see that people that are, are moving into successful careers, even in the STEM field, really do need that foundation mm-hmm. in, in the liberal arts mm-hmm. of, of being able to read and write and, and do those things well is, is crucial if you're going to be successful. So we've had students accepted to, to every all different programs we have uh, students at john hopkins and we have students in um you know the school of mines and, and things like that that are doing very well even though they didn't spend their entire high school career learning 
science, technology, engineering, and math, um, they're, they're very well prepared because mm -hmm. they know how to learn. Right. They know how to go through that grammar, logic, and rhetoric phase so they can learn any new skill very quickly. But they have spent a lot of time learning how to articulate and, and how to discuss, which ultimately makes them more successful. Right. That's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, you know, we do things differently. We're being a classical public school. Um, there's a, a good balance there of... I, again, I think sometimes classical schools and charter schools in general have this reputation of being for the elite mm -hmm. um, and, and being for for the, the richest of the right and the privileged. Um, but we are we are very diverse. We have a, a very diverse student population. Um, we mirror the, the minority and um, rates of, of the city of Longmont. So we're, we're pretty well... Um, diversified in that area and it's to me I feel like our curriculum and teaching the classics and teaching students how to interact and literacy and numeracy is a great equalizer mm -hmm. of we are we are equalizing the playing field that our students no matter what their background they're going to be prepared and they're going to do great things because they they deserve access to that um, so we uh, we're very big on that and including everybody we're a classical education for everybody that's great um, because we believe that's the best way to educate kids yeah um do you do a lot of interaction between the grades yeah, yeah. So we're all in one facility. Mm -hmm. um, elementary is is on one side of the building, and secondary is on the other. So there's there's not a lot of reason for them to be on the other sides of the building. Um, but our high school students do have the opportunity to aid in the classrooms on the elementary side. So mm -hmm. we have several students that go down there to help in the reading class. We have. Um, many students that are native Spanish speakers that go and help in the EL classrooms. Um, we have office aides and, and things like that that are over on that side a lot, um, which is really fun. It's, it's fun to see that. We have a lot of different, especially in the fifth to sixth grade transition and then in the eighth to ninth grade mm -hmm. transition, we spend a lot of time getting them acclimated and coming over to our side of the building and meeting the teachers and, and getting to know some kids. The big kids. The big kids, yep. <laughs> um, so we're, we're really big on community and just mm. we, we are a, a tight-knit community. We're a, a great team. So bringing everybody together while we're doing different things. We have an elementary and a middle and a high school that are, are functional and they're all doing their own thing, um, but under the same umbrella. And we, we all believe that um, what we're doing is, is great for kids. And so we, we do it well together and, and do our best to bring everybody together in that. That's great. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We, you know, we, we're big on, these are just kids. And, and we are here to make them better people. So, but we, we, we have some fun with our kids and um, our elementary kids get three recesses a day. And we, we believe that outside and activity is good for their brains. Mm -hmm. So we, we play. offer a lot of, yes, play, play. Uh, for goodness sakes, <laughs> get them outside. Yes. Um, so we, we kick our middle schoolers out and, and make sure that they're getting some fresh air every day and some exercise uh, and off their cell phones. Yes. Um, so we are, we are cell phone free um, every day, eight to three. Uh, our high school students do have the ability to access theirs. They have jobs and different schedules right. and things like that. Um, so kind of releasing some some more freedoms to well, our older you're, kids. You're integrating the real world. Yes. Let's, let's, yeah. Yep. Um, but we want to, we understand that kids are on their device the second they leave us, especially mm -hmm. in middle school. Um, so for me, it is just, it's so fundamental to, to give them that time to be a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and I will sometimes get some pushback, especially from eighth graders and especially in the spring mm -hmm. of, can I just have my phone at recess? Right? Can I just have my phone at lunch? Mm -hmm. And my answer is kind of sarcastic, but also very seriously, I'm saving your childhood. Like, go play. Yeah. Uh, and so our middle schoolers out there playing basketball and playing volleyball and playing on the play set and, and things like that at, uh, in middle school you don't see all the time. Mm -hmm. But they know how, and they know how to talk to their friends, and they know how to make conversation uh, because we encourage it. It's fantastic. Give them the environment to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they need. That's right. They need that structure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They do. For they sure. want the boundaries. They want the structure. Yeah. Please give it to them. Yep. Yep. 
Um, but we we offer a lot of different extracurriculars for kids too. You know, I talked a little bit about how we want these kids to have every opportunity to learn and, and play and be kids. And part of that comes to extracurriculars too. Mm -hmm. um, so we have lots of different options for kids. Uh, we have all sorts of different sports at both middle school and high school. We are CHASA certified, so we're a, a 2A high school. Mm -hmm. um, so our kids compete just like they do anywhere. Um, I, I'm going to say them, and I hope I get them in the right order and get it right. But for our sports, we have girls volleyball, um, we have boys and girls basketball, we have cross country and track and field, and men's and women's soccer as well. So we have all the uh, the main athletics, um, and then all sorts of different clubs. We got robotics, and we got student ambassador programs, and student council, and NHS and NJHS, um, all the different things. Uh, a pretty normal middle school and high school experience in a smaller environment where staff really knows these kids yeah. and really care very deeply about them, uh, and we get to see them grow up. Watching those kids that we've known for. 12 years uh, is, is pretty amazing. Yeah, because they grow up so fast. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even them being home, like, you're, yeah. just, you're growing up so fast. It just goes. Well, they keep getting older, but I don't. So I don't, <laughs> I don't understand how that works. <laughs> I like it. Uh, but, yeah, so we have lots of different opportunities, all the proms and homecomings mm -hmm. and, and all. Do you guys have a music program? We do, yeah. We have a really strong performing arts. Um, so we have band, choir, and orchestra. Um, that students can participate in. We have a theater program, so mm -hmm. our, we have a drama um, program as well. So we're, we're just getting ready. They're gearing up to start the spring musical. Um, just finished auditions for that. Nice. So all our, our kids are getting excited for the spring musical. Uh, so all sorts of, of fun things like that. It's so a every, great art program. Everything, everything that it, you would think of as in a school, just a little different. Yeah, just yeah. a little different. That's awesome. Yeah, with a different goal. Yeah. Right. So our, our goal is to, to make sure students are prepared. Oh, yeah. Thanks for yep. being on the show today. Thanks for having me. And um, yeah, check them out. And um, yeah, there's other other ways for, for right. schooling for kids. It's yep. not always the same. That's right. All yeah. right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to my guests, my listeners and my supporters. Serving together, we can strengthen our community. Please like and subscribe. Do all those other things. You know, you got to do them. Because that's the easiest way to, that you can serve right now. All right, now go. Connect with others and be a blessing.